Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. This ain't no fairy tale story. Everything is real here. LW see black people 98% of the time. You share pain, you share tears. We are lifelong friends forever. Teachers, please close our doors. We are in an active pause. I'm a senior, and it's make or break time for me. I'm about to get ready to leave high school. Y'all going to jail, because y'all in a stolen car. Come on, Laura! Oh! Bad, a little bit. Six million people playing high school football. The chances of getting to college is hard. But I mean, I think I am good enough for it. My birth mother passed away when I was in second grade. She wouldn't be disappointed. I know she would want me to keep trying for other schools. He has a whole lot going on. Okay. You know, that baby and everything. And, uh, what baby? He has a baby? He's respectable. Getting one? Yeah. Yes. Wow. States and playoffs at all. Go out there competing hard. It's the real up on this place. Yeah. The whole lot of scholarships. We don't win no games. We can't get no looks. You know, I know Rendo is worried and concerned about getting a scholarship. He has to be because he hadn't gotten those calls yet. Talk it up. If I lose, and that's, that's my last high school game. And like, I ain't been hearing too much from my recruitment process, so it's like. We are deep into the third quarter of this must win game for the Bruins. For Captain Rendell Milton, this could be his last chance to impress college scouts. He drives her in the middle of the lane. He puts up the left handed layup and count it. It's good. But now, the Eagles are staging a comeback. What is happening to this Bruins side? Come on! No! no. Listen to me! We're gonna win the game! All right? Shoot it, shoot it! We wasted three possessions already trying to do that long pass and By yourself, bro. Come on, we need this, bro. Let's, Let's go, y'all boy. Let's work. Middle, bro, middle. The fourth and final quarter of play, and this game is slipping away from OW.
Guys, let me tell you. When it's all said and done, it's the end of the season, I want you to make sure that you take some of the things that we taught y'all this season just about life, okay? Even though you know, you're young and it seems like you're gonna be young forever, basketball is just a small part of your life. All right, but I'm gonna tell you like this right here. I love you guys. We are lifelong friends forever, forever. You share pain, you share tears. I want y'all to use this to motivate yourself. The season is over with now, but one thing's for sure. This is a brewing family. Let us pray. Our Father, draw in heaven. I will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. So we had it right there in our hand. What's my next journey in life? What's next? bigger than my other school. It is? Yes. Way bigger? It's way bigger. OW to me is kind of, you know, divided. Every person you see is, you know, black, 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 black. We just had a black president. It's still going on. I'll give you a few quarters, because I have a, a few spares. It's like jail. <laughs> Sausage? Uh -huh. It's a dollar. Yeah. Yum. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. I saw oh. her. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Good. I'm Mr. Gordon. If you need anything, I'm the man you look for. Yes, sir. Take his advice. It's school food. <laughs> right back. It makes me feel like there's something wrong with me, yeah. you know? <laughs> really uncomfortable feeling. I am one of the only white people here at this school. It isn't about somebody's skin color that makes them who they are. It's about how they act and how they carry themselves and their morals and values. I'm really, really sensitive to you coming in because this is a school that's 99% African American. And I wanted to make sure that you felt safe, mm -hmm. that you uh, embrace the idea that nobody was going to bother you. We just love you. I moved around my whole life, mm -hmm. Dr. Peters. You know, like I am, I do have that adaptive mm -hmm. personality. I had a plan to like make it more, mm -hmm. blend it up a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. Because most parents like send their kids to different schools just so they don't have to, you know, be in a school that's mostly black, which is messed up. The more diversity you have in a in a school, the better it is for for everybody involved. Right, exactly. And I think when you have that mixture, um, there's more positive to take out of it than negatives. You know you can always come to me and talk to me about anything that's bothering you, um, and I'll help in any way I can. Yeah. You're listening to the People Station, and I am in studio with Bruins football coach Tommy Brown. Coach, what's next for some of the top players on your team? Cordell, 
came in our program and developed to receive. Always had a lot of confidence. Works hard in the weight room. He's gotten bigger. He's about 194, 63 now. Uh, he has a potential to be a star in the next level. Coach, what is your role when it comes to recruiting? I, I tell some people I actually become like a used car salesman. A lot of cases I call up colleges, I send film, I basically, uh, you know, I try to sell my players. You know, we don't talk about football, we talk about character, we talk about being disciplined in the classroom. We talk about that day where you can sign your name on the dotted line. College, it's the next step. I want to play for South Carolina. I dream of me being a Gamecock, winning national championships. This is University of South Carolina, USC. But this is my favorite team growing up. The people that got money, they go to these camps and stuff, and they get exposure. The recruiters can see them first. Bruh, if you ain't got money to go to them camps, I mean, your exposure is slim to none. This is always the toughest part. Um, recruiting becomes kind of difficult around right here. I just want to go ahead and just get out of Orangeburg right now. I want to get out of Orangeburg. Have you talked to uh, Rendell? I've talked to Rendell. Um, has he talked to you about how he's feeling about the birth of the baby and all this kind of stuff? Um, I get the picture. He's trying to trying to make it seem like he got control over everything, which you know he doesn't really understand what he what he has facing him. I don't think Rendell has a plan. Basically, the scholarships thing is basically like what he's banking on, right? This is, um, this is our this best is, shot at getting him in well, school. Well, you know, I, I sent his uh, his highlight tape to about 20 coaches. Mm -hmm. um, Claflin, we thought we uh, had some things going with them, but, uh, you know, they're, they're a little slow right now, talking slow. Rendell has a tendency to be so cool, and that's good in a way that he has that kind of resolve. But at the same token, we have to all remember that he's still a kid himself who is about to have a kid. The options that Rendell has right now are not solidified. I worry about the chances of Rendell getting a college scholarship. You weren't here. Recruiting is a part that everybody don't know about. Evan Johnson. That's what I got. I got a Carolina person here. Miss Johnson, huh? Yeah. Huh? How you doing? I'm I'm saying, doing man, no, I see, I, I got to see. see. I'm new. See, I'm new. They're looking for players all over the country, so I have to let schools know that we have these kids. I'm just coming over here, man, just meeting folks, you know what I mean? They said the coach from South Carolina ain't been in here, man, so I'm in here just trying to, I'm trying to make that better, man. Man, I get people call me all the time. All right, Ms. Johnson, I'll see you. In fact, it's Jersey. I know you asked me about Cordell Johnson. Well, I'm telling you, um, he's demonstrated what it takes to play on the next level. I mean, I was excited. As soon as I turned around and saw the game cock from the shirt, I was just dazed for a second. We talked a little bit, chitter chat and stuff like that. He talked about getting me up there. Today, he just came and saw me. It's not an offer. So we don't know if I'm playing Carolina, or we don't know what, we don't know what they're thinking. They actually might talk to five, six, 10 kids a day, and you're selling the same dream to every kid.
this is my favorite food of all time. Right here, macaroni and cheese. This is Velveeta cheese shells, where it's got the real cheese. Instead of the powder kind. I don't like the powder kind. Delicious. So tell me, how are you feeling about the new school? You know, like how I've switched from school to school to school for the past few years because of dad and you living in separate cities. Mm -hmm. Like, I just used to want to make friends instead of being there for my school, and I want to, you know, fit in and stuff. Now it's like I know what I need to be there for. I know what I want, so it's easier for me to concentrate. So you've been able to focus. Yeah. We waited so long to put you in OW for fear that somehow be treated differently than some of the other oh, students. I definitely am. Do you feel like you are? Yes. Really? How so? Just sly remarks, you know. Students can be a little rough. Yeah, I get called times. names. Yeah. You know, I but get... you, you did that in public. I mean, in private school I've as been well. Called, I've been called Snow Bunny. I've been called White Girl. I've been called all kind of pasty, you know, all kind of names. The school system here has become extremely segregated and to the point of where OW, at the thousands of students that are there, you could probably count on your hands Five and toes six. the number of, of Caucasian students. So she and I decided together that, you know what, we're only two little people and a we little can, small We can start place, a chain but we reaction. can make a difference. You know what, we want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. So, as you know, I'm planning your 16th birthday party. So I know you want to invite several people from your new school. So tell me, Mackenzie, what do you want at your party? Point, the, the major schools, uh, if they don't, if they haven't already contacted you by now, the chances are you won't get any uh, any communication with them. All right. Um, first and foremost, everything, everything coming along with the baby. Good. Good. Now, what is she having again? Girl, boy. Little girl. Little girl. Okay. Um, you know, whatever you are capable of doing to make you know to make things easier for her, make sure you do that. You know, and that's just the part of the grown up part that you got to do with this situation right here. And just to talk and make sure that certain things, we're doing certain things, you know, just as far as, um, you know, moving on. I want to make sure that you um, keeping yourself in shape. We never know who you're going to have to work out for. All right. I just need to be Scottish here. That's all that's going through my head. What's it like being a footballer? Girls, you know, that's the main thing, the girls. If you go for the athlete type, then you have the girls that come after the athletes and stuff like that, and you have that to worry about. I would not go out with a boy from this school. It's like you can't find a nice boy that has a nice brain. I like to shop. I like clothing. I like clothing. I like to dress. I like females. You want to hear a cheesy pickup line? Is something wrong with your left eye? Because you've been looking right all day. <laughs> Hey, I'll be. I'll be. Yes, Cordell. How many times you gonna call my name? I'm saying yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about Aubrey. Oh my gosh. Like, she's so amazing. You know they think you're amazing. Benny Hollis? It's gonna be a date. Oh, he got no excuses. He got no excuses. You about to leave. You about to go. What that mean? Bye. What that mean? It means you might be. You might be I'm, I'm also about to be a superstar or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also about to be a superstar. Yeah, let's go ice skating. No, because then I'm going to fall. That's it's fun. fun. No, that's, that's not fun. That's the fun part about it. That's, that's not fun. fun. That's the fun part no, about it. No, no, no. 
that on a first date, you don't go ice skating. You go ice skating when you dating. Like, uh -huh. after okay, like three or four days. Uh, a restaurant or something. I ain't paying for my own food. Uh, okay. I'm just saying. I've been on a date where I had to pay for my own food. Ooh. Make your business. So we made some fish? Oh, okay. I did a deal. One. I did a deal. One date. I did a deal. All right. I did a deal. Huh? It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm just gonna like get it. Bad. <laughs> you going to get it, man. You going to get it. What's up? All right, you bringing friends? Yeah. OK. <laughs> All right, so everybody listen up, including you, Ashley. All right, tomorrow at my party, we're going to have a bonfire with s'mores and you already know. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah, I'm about to come. And a hot dogs and burgers. Hot dogs. And burgers. Oh, I eat right. burgers. Don't put no onions in have We're going to have dance contests for the girls. I ain't with all that. You win a Michael Kors purse. We're going to have a DJ. When? I have to write you some invitations. Hey, we're gonna be there. How much cost? We get in. No. Just bring me some money for my birthday, yo. Hey, I can do that. I bring you two cents. <laughs> I've invited probably like 40, 30, maybe 50. <laughs> so it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be fun. And my boyfriend's gonna be there. <laughs> South Carolina State has a good football team. It's just the fact that it's in Orangeburg, and I grew up here my whole life. Hey, man, where are you? I'm at home. Oh, because I got a gentleman wanting to see you. OK. So that means if he chased you, told you it's a school, then that means you should have had your body here, right? Man, you all right, big time? You all right? Hey, Let's time. go. Go ahead and sit down and talk. So what's going on, man? Coach Blanchard, South Carolina State. Yes, sir. Yeah, I came to watch you play a couple times this year. Yeah. Yeah. So what's going on with you? How, how the class is going? Yeah. Going pretty good? Yeah. All right. Like I was telling Coach, we might need to see if we can get something done to get you over there if it's something you want to do. All right? Because I see you go up and get that football, man. I don't see people go up and get it like that. Huh? Yes, sir. So when the ball in the air is yours? It's mine. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Now, what what you got going on as far as colleges, anything right now? Nobody really. Nobody really? OK. I can't promise you any money right now. But y'all grades and stuff are pretty good. Yes, sir. Uh, so we can work out a way where we can get something taken care of where you don't have to pay so much. And, and we might see if we can do something else for you, too. You too big of a talent not to come and talk to now. I mean, it's an opportunity. That's all, I, that's all I'm saying, it's an opportunity. South Carolina State is a HBCU. HBCU stands for Historically Black College or University. They created schools so that black people could go to college and get an education because they weren't allowed to go to the white schools. And PWI stands for Predominantly White Institution. The world is not black. The world is not what you see. Black people are a minority. The majority are white people. So I wanted to go to school so I can interact with them and, you know, become cool with them. I don't want to just be around, you know, black people the whole time. It turned out that I did not get into Georgia Tech. The main reason why I wanted to go to Georgia Tech was because I wanted to go to one of the top engineering schools in the country. And I thought that would be a great setting for me. I thought it would be, I thought it would set a great path for my future. 
It is okay to be disappointed. You can even go mourn, so to say, for a little bit, but you shouldn't linger in it like for weeks and weeks and just cry just because you didn't get into a certain college. You gotta keep moving. I thought, you know, South Carolina Gamecocks was gonna come off of me, but they didn't. I'm mad how other people get in office. I don't wanna be here at all. Get me? I'm ghost. I'm out here. Finito. You gotta get away, man. You gotta get away. Yeah, it's just gonna be crazy. I, I ain't saying this is a bad city, but uh, I just can't do it. I can't do it no more. I dream of being a game cop, but it was a dreams. You have to look realistically now. You have to be real with yourself. I know he's hurt, and I wish I could say something to him more and let him know that, you know, things are going to work out in spite of this disappointment. Then there is Jesus calling us to join him in the beloved community that Martin Luther King Jr. envisioned. You I think people with Jesus. broken families can still achieve their goals. If you apply yourself and believe in yourself, and find people who believe in you as well, then you can almost do anything. A lot of our kids here at Jones Chapel are very talented, amen? amen. Let's give our young people a hand. <laughs> we love all y'all. In 15 years, I saw you grow up in this church. But you know, we were in at the Southeast Region Youth Conference a few years ago, and Jelena competed for a pageant there. And she pulled out a violin. All right. <laughs> And it was all over. <laughs> well, good morning again, everybody. Good morning. I was just saying to my wife, is there anything that girl can't do? <laughs> so I know she's embarrassed now. She's <laughs> but um, oftentimes we hear people talk about a standard of excellence. And everybody wants it, but very few people are showing other people what it looks like. I have applied to a lot of colleges, and I only have two responses. One was a rejection from Georgia Tech. And this Friday, I'm supposed to receive a reply from the University of, Fo of Florida. Do you think it's just like, what do scouts, I know they look at you, but do they look like really into you? Like your personality and stuff? Yeah. You know? See, that's one thing I don't get. They could care less about that. You know where I really, like, want to go? I want to go to HBCU. My top three choices are HBCUs. PWIs aren't for me. Let me ask you a question, though. How many universities are HBCUs there, all right? It's probably like 30 or 45. Mm -hmm. Either way, they're less than the PWIs. Yeah, they're less than PWIs. So if you're less, what are you? Minority? I don't care about minority. You got a problem with, like, PWIs? No. I want to go to one. You, like, half black, half white, ain't No, I'm not. You always black? Yes. Dang, dog. You is, like, super light-skinned. You might not be a minority. You might be a majority. I am a minority. You see my mom, and you've seen somebody, my dad. Somebody in your family white. Nobody in my family is white. Last time you saw as an Donald Trump. He really didn't know what people go through. I think this whole thing is just for show. Like, it doesn't even seem like a campaign. It just seems like reality TV. And then if he really gets president, we're going to be in trouble. But then when Barack Obama, well, he did kill Osama bin Laden. He lowered gas prices. Lord, get, yes, Lord. Everything that he promised he was going to do, he did it. 
You know what the best thing about Obama is? What? Michelle. Oh. <laughs> you just don't have a good explanation. You wonder why? Why? But how every great man is what? A great woman. Thank you. What do you have to say about that? Is that sexist? No. I mean, it's like she has to have a man with her to be great. She just can't be great alone. You get what I'm saying? Like, for example, Hillary Clinton, they still dragging on Bill Clinton. In a way, they're speaking for minorities, but in a different way, they're not speaking for minorities. I think they care about minorities. I just want them to care a little bit more. I just wish it was more like opportunities for blacks. You can't choose where you're born in, the city you're born in. No. You can't choose your parents. You can't choose if you're in poverty. It's how much do you want to beat the odds? Do you want to make it an orange bird? And to get to the point where they're in college or anything. There's kids at our school that's struggling now. You know, the no daddy, single mama. Well, so you saying it like that, I um, guess I'm a part of the story. It's hard. He's focused on getting out of Orangeburg, which most people want to do. I don't know if he was trying to make a decision or what. I think he should just stay here. I still want to go to school. I still want to go to college. If I did get the scholarship, it would take a little burden off my back. Do you think all of those kids in that school got scholarship? No. I, but I know people who doing it, though, right now as we speak. People like Isaiah, Puff, Fred, Sean Bay. I These full scholarship players who I played with. OK, you looking at reality. The reality is, OK, man, I ain't got no scholarship. So what you do is when you get to school, you're going to have to do it like men do. I can't get a part-time job and play basketball there. You, you don't know that yet. It's not going to happen there. Yeah, but I'm just saying, you don't, you haven't Have you been ever seen yet. it happen? I, don't, I haven't been there yet. That's why I'm telling you. <laughs> a lot of college players get a lot of stuff there that you don't know about. Yeah, you still talking about the scholarship. Not saying it to be rude or nothing, but you can't put yourself in my shoes if you're not in my situation. With a, a full baby, a little girl who going to need milk, diapers, food, clothes. What, Dad, can, you, I what can you possibly tell me about money with a child? I got not, five boys. Not saying with a child. You want to be able to provide for your daughter? Yeah, that's the whole purpose of you going to school, so you can be able to provide for her. You think I'm just want to walk around campus, ain't got no money, just playing basketball? No, you're going to have to have money. Right, Dad. But money don't make you a man, Rob. But, Dad, I'm, I'm not saying money make you a man, Dad, but you acting like you just don't need money, period. Yeah, you need it, but you, you got to have... You need money. You got to have everything to go with the money. You know how? You can't... That's just like you're saying, I'm a man, but you broke. If you broke, you a joke. Simple. No, if you broke and you're not doing nothing, you a joke. But if you broke and doing something with yourself and trying to get somewhere, that's a winner right there. You cannot fold under pressure at all. If you let all that stuff stress you out, you will go crazy. There's a lot on my plate. Like, I'm trying to contemplate my next move. from University of Florida came today. Dear Jelena, congratulations on your admission to the University of Florida for the fall 2016 term. It is a pleasure to welcome you to UF and its distinctive community of le learners, leaders, and thinkers. During our review of your application, the committee was impressed with your outstanding academic and personal achievements. Ooh, fancy, it shines. 
I want to go out of state. I want to go. What? I'm excited. Hopefully, I can go here. I'm kind of proud of myself, but getting into college and being able to pay for that college while you're there, there are two different things. The tuition on average in America is around $30,000 to $40,000 for a year. And that's just tuition. That's not including the room and board and fees and books. It's a scholarship application to see if we can get more money. They're asking for background stuff. So what have you done which shows that you will do well at their school because they don't want to give anybody money that won't drop out, mm -hmm. which makes sense. No, no, no. I mean, it's not a matter of bragging. It's just that they don't know what you're doing. And if you don't put it out there, they won't know that you're worth the scholarship. OK. So put it all out there. I'll tell you if you're overdoing it. I'll just sketch it up. <laughs> I treat her like she is mine. Sometimes I'm um, pretty harsh in my criticism, but it's, it's only to make her better and make sure that she gets you know, where she needs to be. Signing day is when high school players choose what college they're going to and sign their names. South Carolina State is in Orangeburg. The coaches told me they want me on the team, but they don't have no money. Right now, you got a legitimate chance of forming a relationship with this coach and saying, I'm, I'm going to commit to South Carolina State. I guess now, you know, we're down to a point of making a phone call to say, we're ready to move forward. But then I just heard you say again, I think something else is going to come through. Oh, they might offer me a full scholarship. I'm mean, not taking me a full scholarship. I'll sign now. I'll sign today. But they're not doing that. All right, so I'm going to give them a call. Hey, Coach Pugh, how are you today? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm touching base with you to see what direction we're going to take on my student. OK. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're going to put a package together as a walk-on, because he, he's run out of his money for scholarships. It's the same kind of situation Coach Brown had. And he had a stellar career. Congratulations. What are you um, anxious about? Nothing. I think we're at a point right now where you have to make a decision. my phone and it's off. I bet someone picked up thinking it's theirs. Really think it's a mistake, Heather. Don't stress too much. I'm going to ask everyone to please help me find this telephone. If I see it, I'll give it to you. Just ask everybody if they have it. Oh, no, we just lost two more. Hello. Whoever, whoever took the phone, you're not a very good person, and I promise you, Oh my God. Veronica's gonna turn it off and you're gonna get in trouble for it. So if you have the phone, kindly go give it back to her. 
smoking marijuana in the house, apparently. Mm -hmm. And Mackenzie's uncle caught them. And there was just, like, a lot of conflict. He just stepped to me out of nowhere and tapped me on the shoulder. I looked back at him, and he was like, um, if you have any marijuana around my niece, I'll kill you. What did he say to you? Tell me what he said. You told him about smoking in the house, and that you, you caught him again, you kill him or whatever. That's right. And what did he say? Nothing. He walked out the door. I told him now. That's the brother-in-law. Quit smoking that weed around here. I would kill him. And I'm telling you right now, I got on my side that I'll. All right, myself. that is ridiculous. It's a party. But you said Brianna, let it go. It's a girl birthday party. Y'all still over here arguing about something? Tell y'all how I'm gonna hide. Let me show you how you hide. No, I don't mess with him like that. I mean, I see him. I told him. Let it go. Not this house. But he did not bring no weed, so you said it's a wrong person. It's sad. Her birthday party has to come to this. Sad is what it is. Very sad. Today is National Sign Day for Orangeburg Wilkinson student athletes. Lives change right here on this day. You're gonna have difficulties. You're gonna have a bunch of things that come at you. You can't make no excuses. People that make excuses become woulda, shoulda, coulda people. And I really don't want to become that. The day you sign your name, you start the next chapter of your life. These young men have been blessed to have an opportunity to play on the next level. It shows that what we're about, it shows what kind of students we put out into this community, into this world. Thankful for the families, we're thankful for the athletes, and we're thankful to, to get to celebrate with them because today they start the next chapter in their lives. We got uh, James Valdez going to North Carolina State. Uh, we got Darren up the ground and Cordelia Walker. Nothing is guaranteed. So when a school comes in and say, hey, we like you, we want to offer you, that's big. Wanted to play football. That's that's my goal. I love the game so much. And Cordell Johnson <laughs> is going to my home school. So they're going to be Bulldogs. So, hey, that's great. South Carolina State, they gave me a shot. They want me to come in and start. And if I do good, they'll give me a full scholarship my second year. <laughs> You're proud of him. I'm always proud of him, always. Every college had the same opportunity to come and sign me, but they didn't. So I want to make State feel like they made the right choice. And I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. And just, you know, do what I've been, been born to do. Hey, we got it done. What a fiasco. Yeah, the sad part is none of them get to come to school tomorrow, or the next day, or the next day. Gosh. Once you pull a trigger, like the bullet's out of the gun. I'm scared. I don't want to be a failure. In God's hand. Y'all going to jail? Yes, sir. Cause y'all in a stolen car. 